What's up my channel? It's your friendly neighborhood, Sassy Blonde Rider, coming back with some writing videos. I'm trying a new theme song. Let me know if you like it in the comments. Today we are doing the What Books Influenced My Writing Author Tube Tag. This tag was created by Sarah Labrat. I'm linking to her channel down below. Okay, so we are going to be looking at the books that I love, the books I grew up with as examples for writing, and the books that influenced me the most, not only as a reader, but as her, my writing style. Before we go on, I do just wanna say this. Please subscribe to my channel. I post new videos once a week, and you wouldn't wanna miss some of my fabulous content, would you? Course not. Question number one, when did you start writing? I guess the real question is like, when did I start writing for myself and not for like school assignments? Cause I mean, like, when I was in elementary school, that was when the writer, the little, cute little writer's notebooks became a whole thing. Like they were huge fads. I was always obsessed with my writer's notebooks. I think I still have them at like my family's house, but that's neither here nor there. So I always loved creative writing and reflective writing. Like I've always been the person with like a diary. I was obsessed with Amelia's notebook. I remember I had all of those books. I loved them so much and there was so much detail in them too because there was always like little drawings on the side and then little commentary and like little like little jokes in, in the margins which I just thought was always so cute. So I've always loved like writing in a diary. I think that was the book that really made me want to write a diary and kind of get into journaling which I still do now so like that's awesome. I think I started reading those when I was in like fourth grade I want to say. So I've always loved the, that book definitely made me a journaler. I'm trying to think what book really made me like a writer writer. I think I've talked about this in a, in a separate video but what really made me want to like be a writer was I think it was like in sixth grade and that was kind of when we stopped doing so much creative writing. But I think I was in like sixth grade where I was like all right I'm gonna do it. Like, I'm gonna write my own novel. Cause I'd written short stories before. Um, I mean, that's like what you, you you know, your writer's notebook was basically filled with like short stories or like flash fiction or just like reflections or like personal, I guess like personal narratives as well. But there was no time where I really sat down and like wrote a book. So I think the first time I tried to do that, I think I've said this in other videos, was like sixth grade, I wanna say. The Miracle Dog. So I'd say late elementary, early middle school is when I started like really writing for myself, not like outside of school assignments. That's when I really sort of think of myself as a writer. Question two, what genres do you seem to read the most? As you can see from here, the books that I read pretty much run the gambit. I've noticed when I was in like middle school, I read more realistic fiction. I was really into the Click series, and then I realized series are really hard to keep up with. When I was in elementary school, I definitely was really into fantasy. And then I was kind of lucky because when I got into like high school, that was when YA was like, mwah, chef's kiss. Uh, because you had, I mean, you had Harry Potter. We had, <laughs> okay, Twilight, which was, was a good book when I read it at the time, okay? And we also had the Hunger Games, so it was just, it was like the year young adult became kind of its own separate genre, I feel like. And that's when it really came into its own. And publishers were like, we struck gold, you guys. So I was super into YA fantasy. Never really been much of a sci-fi person. Even I love sci-fi movies and I love sci-fi video games, but I find Sci-fi, certain, I like futuristic, like dystopian novels, which always have sci-fi elements, but I find like just straight up sci-fi novels are always like hard to pull off well. Maybe that's just the examples I've been reading. Example of sci-fi that was done really well was actually The Stars We Steal. I recently read that. It, it was nice because I, the, 2020 was kind of a rough year for me reading wise, so I was happy I was reading any books. I take back what I said, because that was a sci-fi that was really well done. Because I find some sci-fi kind of critiques technology a little bit too much. Sometimes if they're written by somebody who just hates technology or doesn't really understand how it works. Um, but The Stars We Steal was really cool because I love Jane Austen. I love sci-fi. This is like 
perfect. It's like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, but two things that live together, bada bing, bada boom. Recently, I've started getting into thrillers more. I recently finished Gone Girl, which is really good. Really good critique on just like how we view women in society, the different tropes for female playing the victim, different gender roles. And I also read My Sister is a Serial Killer, which is, it was kind of funny because I felt like they kind of tackled similar types of issues, just how we view women who do bad things. So it was really interesting to read both of them kind of back to back. But, but yeah, I find I read, I just kind of read books that I like and I don't really think about the genre. I just, I'm very eclectic. I'm, I'd say for the most part, I usually read like fantasy, just like I usually listen to musicals. What are you writing right now? So right now I am, <laughs> this is a tough question. So right now I'm kind of in between four, four different projects. One of them is a radio play that my friend and I are doing that'll be on our podcast at some point. So keep an eye out for that. I'm also working on my YA retelling of Frankenstein. I'm in the beta reading slash I guess revisions process of my mystery novel, my Nancy Drew-esque mystery novel. And last but certainly not least, I'm going through my final round of edits for my urban fantasy. It's kind of like Gilmore Girls meets urban fantasy type of novel, I guess. So I'm working on that so that way I can get ready for querying. So that way I can finally do this. Oh, sorry, my bad, not four. Five, bonus number five, I'm revising and, well, I guess more editing to get ready for querying a children's book based off of an old Irish fairy tale. So, yep, so five projects. Oh, and I'm also doing a little challenge to myself where once a month I write down, I sit down and I write either a short story or flash fiction with a writing prompt, so. Why am I doing this to myself? Am I crazy? Probably. Question four, what are the books that have inspired your writing and how? Ooh, so the books that have influenced my writing the most, I think would have to be the ones that I just keep finding myself either coming back to the quotes, maybe I read them once and I just can't stop thinking about them. So unfortunately, I was just looking through my bookshelf. I can't find one of them, which makes me kind of sad. It's called Distant Waves, historical science fiction. Never thought those two would go together, but yeah, it's historical science fiction. And got a lot of different elements. It's um, kind of centered around the Titanic the years before and then a couple years afterwards as well. Tesla, um, Nikolai Tesla, is kind of <laughs> the mad scientist who kind of um, does a bunch of crazy things that kind of cause the events of the book. So it's, it's centered around this family, they're living, um, their mother is uh, a witch, or she's like pretending to be a witch. There's like magical elements and sci-fi elements. I loved this book. I'm really scared to go back and read it because I loved it so much and I'm scared if I go back with like my adult eyes that I'll just be like, oh no, terrible. But I really enjoyed that book and it kind of showed me how you can blend a bunch of different genres together. That's a book that has definitely influenced my writing because I like to also blend different genres together. I love sci-fi elements and historical fiction is also something I love as well. Another one, I mean, I have a podcast ded dedicated to this girl, Jane Austen cover to cover, specifically Pride and Prejudice, although I do love Emma. If you wanna hear me talk about how much I love Jane Austen, I mean, just go listen to my podcast, link's down below. This is actually something that one of my friends got me. Ironically, the friend had never read Jane Austen before, but she knew that I love Jane Austen, so she got me this book, and so I keep it forever close to my heart. One of my favorite things about Jane Austen is the way she critiques the society that she lives in, and she does it in a way that doesn't come across preachy, because I mean, especially with some of the older, the, some of the writers that you study in school, it comes across really preachy. Like for example, George Orwell, not one of my favorite authors. I, just, I find his writing kind of holier than thou. But Jane Austen critiques her society and the way women are treated back in Regency era England. She critiques it in a way that you notice it, but it doesn't come across as preachy. It doesn't come across as her telling you what to do, and she also writes really good female characters. Uh, female characters that are fully developed, female characters that are able to play the game and work within what's been happening to them, work within the restrictions of their time period. Another influence to my writing is, I did a whole video about her, 
Agatha Christie. This is one of the first Agatha Christie novels that I ever read and then there were none. And it's just the way this woman pieces together a mystery is just astounding. But funny story, this book actually came with a video game based off of and then there were none. It's really funny to play the video game after I read the story. Anyway, so there's like an old like 90s point and click uh, video game by the adventure company. This woman knows how to craft a story. She knows suspense. She knows how to make a plot twist that you don't see coming at first and then you can even go back and reread it and you're like, oh, the clues were there all along. Another book that has influenced me as a writer and I guess author in general is a Kite Runner, one of my favorite books of all time by Khalid Husseini. Khalid Husseini, I think that's how you say his name. I've only ever read it, I've never heard it, so that's my best guess on what it is, and I apologize if I got it wrong. I love Kite Runner so much. I actually had to read it two times when I was in high school. One time I was in like ninth grade, I was way too young to be reading this book, and a lot of it just went over my head. I don't even think I finished it. I think it was like a school project, and I just never finished it. Shh, don't tell the teacher. And then I had to read it again in 11th grade for AP English, it was AP Literature, and at that point, I was kind of mature enough to be able to read this book and really not just appreciate it, but also just understand the nuances in the plot. There's also a lot of really good quotes. The thing about that book a lot of times, it's just so well done. I the, ugh, Just mwah, chef's kiss. Another book that I have to mention because it's going to come up in a later question is The Musician's Daughter by Susan Dumlap. Uh, this is one of my favorite books of hers. It's set in like... I guess similar to like Jane Austen-y types of times, like Regency era, but it's set in, I believe, Vienna. I am a music person, so I really appreciated the uh, different composers that she features. She wants to be, I believe, a violinist. Her father was a violinist as well. And then in on like the first page, so this isn't a spoiler, she found out her father was murdered and throughout the whole book, she's trying to figure out why he was murdered, what he was involved with. And the twists and turns in this book were just so good. This was the type of book where I read it when I was in high school and I just remember like every spare minute I had, I was reading this book. There's a break in class, I'm reading this book. I finished a test, I'm reading this book. I'm in the car with my mom driving to tennis practice, I'm reading this book. So this is one of my favorite books. I'm gonna talk about why I mentioned it in a second. Question five, talk about what you are writing now, whether it's your current work in progress or a genre you generally write in. So I guess right now I'd say my main focus is urban fantasy because I'm kind of in that world while I'm editing my current novel. I'm not sure if I should classify it as young adult or adult because like it's an older young adult. so. That sounds like a problem for later me. I really like urban fantasy because I always loved fantasy. However, I find most fantasy books kind of take place in the same era where it's like the quasi medieval time period. But one of the things that I always thought was interesting and one of the, I guess, kind of complaints that I have about Harry Potter is even though it's set in like present day, it's like set in the 90s, it doesn't incorporate technology at all. And I remember one day I was watching the last Harry Potter movie and they were literally in London at the time. So like they weren't at Hogwarts. They could have just gotten a freaking cell phone. It was set around the same time period as like cell phones were coming about. So they could have had a cell phone. And a lot of this, like a lot of the plot points could have been avoided if they had embraced human technology rather than pretend it didn't exist. So that's part of what got me into urban fantasy. And that's part of what made me want to write urban fantasy. Question six how each of the books you mentioned have influenced your writing as current book you're writing. I already talked about this a little bit. So I'm going to talk about the three books that I have physically right here with me because I can literally pull them up and like go through them. I already talked a little bit about some of the other books, but these um, three books, these three books um, specifically influenced my current novel that I'm working on. So. Here we go. The Musician's Daughter, I'm gonna read the blurb right now. When her father is discovered dead on Christmas Eve, his valuable violin is missing, a mysterious gold pendant found around his neck. 15-year-old Teresa is convinced murder is a play. The key to her father's death seems to lie in his world of music, so Teresa sets to work as a copyist for acclaimed composer Franz Joseph Haydn. Determined to uncover a mystery of his untimely end, 
Teresa gains access to the imperial halls of Prince Nicholas Esterhazy's court and delves into her father's secret life. The trail of blackmail and extortion she discovers leads her from the splendor of the royal court to the shadowy tents of a gypsy camp. But it is the stirrings of love for a man she only thought she knew that then might prove the most astonishing discovery of all. Okay, so like the blurb is kind of like a Netflix synopsis where it's like, okay, I mean, yeah, she does fall in love, but that's like the C plot, to be honest. There's like, the A plot is obviously finding out who killed her father, but like the B plot is also just discusses not just the nuances of politics in the royal court, which we come, which we see a lot, but how it affects other people, how it affects the outcasts of the society. I also thought it was really interesting because you don't see a lot of stories where the daughter decides to solve the father's murder and avenge the father's death essentially and so i enjoy my strong female characters and again it was not a, a really about the romance but i guess they thought that would sell it whatever the other book i mentioned is agatha christie now i said in my video she's the mother of all plot twists and that's what has influenced my writing the most that's how it influenced my current work in progress my urban fantasy but you wouldn't expect agatha christie to impact that but it showed me what i need to do in order to have a satisfying plot twist um and how i need the audience to react to certain things in order to actually build up a plot twist in a way that is shocking but also you can go back and be like, oh, if I had paid attention just a little bit more, I could have seen that coming maybe. So that's why Agatha Christie has influenced my work in progress. And of course we have the illustrious Jane Austen. One of my favorite things about Jane Austen is how she writes dialogue between pretty much any two people. I love her different quirky characters that just kind of jump off the page. I love how relatable a lot of the stories are even though you know we don't live in Regency England it's still super relatable like we all have that one friend who's like Emma where she just likes to meddle in other people's lives and give advice even though nobody asked and it's not very good advice we're all protective of our friends in some way like Mr. Darcy is protective of Sir Bingley Lizzie Bennet is protective of her sister Jane we all have that and I also just love how she writes female friendships and female relationships as well that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video book tag of books that influenced my writing. If anybody else wants to take a shot, go ahead. I linked to the original video down below. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you have any books that you think I should read that might impact my writing, please put them in the comments down below. Make sure you like and subscribe so you don't miss any videos I post on Wednesdays. And of course, happy writing.